We are back with expert antiques appraiser Dr. Lori to look at a few more items sent in by you. Yeah, and we're starting this segment with an old license plate sent in by Lisa. And Dr. Lori, we've been showing this throughout the show sort of to get viewers on board as to what it might be worth. So tell us what you can about it. Well, there's a couple things about license plates in general. First of all, you'll notice that it says 55. Well, of course, that's the year. You all know this when you get the little sticker, or you used to anyway, and put it on the license plate. So it's, it's a 1955 license plate. The numbers and how many numbers will matter. So the fewer the amount of numbers, usually the more valuable the license plate. This particular one is from 1955. Now remember, Alaska does not become a state until January of 1959. Wow. So now you have a license plate that is not within what we would consider, of course, the United States, because it's not a state yet. So that's kind of interesting. The flag is also interesting. The flag, of course, relates to the Big Dipper. Um, and that flag actually, the Alaska flag, actually a little fun tip for you, was um, designed by a youngster who actually won a contest and his flag got selected and that's now the Alaska flag. You are a wealth of knowledge, Dr. Laurie. I have a sense. lot of sort of little details that I know. Not really a lot of good information, but a lot of details. <laughs> okay, so, so 47,793 on a plate in a state that wasn't a state yet right 1955 I mean I don't know this impacts value these kinds of cut tips impact value because there's a rarity to it that it's earlier than it than the state than when it was a state right the flags are not always shown on the license plate so there's a rarity to that so are you help I know helping you with this mm -hmm. you are okay. helping I just wonder what the demand rarity would be for something like that Okay, well, you know, people do collect license plates. There was a license plate from Delaware that had only four numbers on it, and that license plate um, went for upwards of about $1,000. Oh, okay, well, that helps. That's a little but bit Delaware's of Delaware's the first state now, remember. Yeah. So there's a different type of collectability we're looking at here. Hmm. Yeah, kind of hard. This one was hard. This one okay. is hard, but I, I just have a feeling that it's worth more than you would think. So that's okay. why I, I went bigger than I initially was going to go. Go. Let's see. I, I want $600. I want 80 <laughs> I love Heather. Go. Let's see. What do you think? <laughs> it's worth $95. That's oh, my gosh. <laughs> go All bigger. Right, I actually, was go way home. off. Yeah, I'm ready to <laughs> go home, apparently, because that was uh, not so, such a good guess. Okay. okay. Up next, we have a decanter from Amy. Okay, this is a decanter set. So this is ruby glass cut to clear. That means they cut away the ruby glass and they frost the ruby glass so you can see the clear glass beneath. It's a beautiful decanter with the original stopper. The stopper is important for value. Dates to the 1960s. Doesn't it look like Mad Men? It does. It does, it's and it's sharp. really gorgeous, yeah. Hmm. So yeah. Is, is it made by like a, a company or a name that we would know? It's made in Pittsburgh. Um, it is a Pittsburgh manufacturer. It's very, very nicely made. Um, I would say that it is a, a very nice piece in the manner of Westmoreland glass. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I'm going. I'm going would for... Would you use it? Would you use it today? Yeah, I think it's really neat. I think it would be beautiful on display. Mm. Yeah, I like it. Okay. And six glasses is the complete set. Barware is hot with the collectibles element with collectors right now, particularly millennial and young collectors like barware. <laughs> Are you thinking of changing your... <laughs> I don't know. Oh. All right, I'm just sticking with what I have. Okay. You I go went, ahead. You go first. I went 125. I went higher. I went 250. 250 for the set. All right, David. Oh, it is finally. Tied. Okay. Oh, it's tied up. It's tied. Oh, I love these sort of competitive dun, dun, games. Dun, dun, dun. Very, very good. All right. Last up, and this is going to be the tiebreaker. Elizabeth has okay. sent us a picture of a mirror. I love how this she was able to not get in the picture, too. Way to go, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, way to go. Yeah, that's not easy to do, no. i got to say. This is an early 1900s mirror. So the mirror dates between the 20s to the 40s in that neck of the woods. And some of the ways you can tell is the circular element with the wings. You see the circular round mirror, then it has the wings on each side. So that's a, a typical thing that we see from about 1925 to about 1940 or so. Um, it has a nice element at the top top as well as the beading all the way around but a nice element at the top of that finial or that top piece which is a spray or a bouquet of flowers in a vase very typical of that time period into the 1930s 
It was probably made in the United States. She said it was her grandmother's, and uh, it's relatively big. It probably could support, or as we would say in museums, it can hold the wall. So mm. enough information, enough visual information to hold the wall. Mirrors are pretty expensive if you buy one now. Is there something you would be looking for if you're if you see one of these at a flea market or if it's passed down like this one was? Yeah, good question. Yeah, what you're looking for is to make sure that the wood, it's a wood support, and then they put composition matter, which is like a plaster, to mold all the decorations, and then they gild it. So you want to make sure that none of that plaster has actually fallen off or is broken, and I think hers is in beautiful shape. Okay, I got one. That's what you look for. Okay. I went $200. I went $199. Did for you see me write $200? No, I didn't. Oh, good. Well, I won anyways. What? It's two hundred dollars. Mr. Drew Carey. <laughs> I thought I'd just do a prices you right said, move. You said three hundred, right? Three hundred. All right. Three hundred dollars. Okay. One ninety nine. Good game today. Good game today. It was. It was a great game. Thank you, Dr. Lori. My pleasure, my pleasure. Happy spring. Happy spring to you, you too. You too. We'll see you again next Tuesday. And we want to say thanks again to everyone who sent in pictures and who continue to for a future episode with Dr. Lori. Watch next Tuesday to see if she features yours.